On any day that promises a clear night, I will open up the observatory, engage all the systems, and prepare for a night of shooting astrophotography. And one of those tasks virtually always involves setting out a camera on a tripod to shoot a time-lapse of the spiraling sky. Because I just feel in my heart there are a few things more wondrous and mysterious and enchanting than the sight of the stars and worlds dancing around the pole, a dance they have done every night for billions of years, yet which never grows old or stale and is always as mesmerizing to me as the very first day when, as a child, I learned that the stars were not static, but moved through the sky high overhead. If you'd like to learn how to shoot a time-lapse of the night sky, it's not hard. In fact, you can do it with almost any camera. I've used larger frame cameras such as my Fuji X-T3, which has an APS-C sensor, and I've done it with my Panasonic Lumix, which has a one-inch sensor. I've never tried it with a sensor in a cell phone, but it might be possible. Those tiny sensors might struggle to catch the low light, but it's worth giving it a shot. And the technique is simple. And in this episode, I'll walk you through it. I'm going to cover how to shoot a night time lapse with a DSLR, partly because it's what I'm most familiar with working with, but also because the large sensors that DSLRs offer are simply better for producing images in low light conditions. There's another reason as well. The circular shape of a DSLR lens can easily take a wraparound lens heater, and if you're going to shoot all the way to dawn, that's important. Also, most DSLRs, at least all the ones that I have worked with over the years, can work while taking power from an external power source. And finally, the weight of a DSLR gives them a little mass, so they're just more likely to stay stable during the night if in case something like night breezes blow or a large insect lands on them. To shoot a night time lapse, you'll require the following items. At the minimum, you'll need a camera with a fairly fast lens and a tripod. You may also wish to have an external power source and a cable so that you can get power into the camera while it's filming since it'll be going all night and a deuce strap of some kind. All right, let's jump into this process. It's not difficult. In fact, it's very straightforward. So it'll only take a few minutes to go over all of this. The first thing is you need to pick a location where you have dark skies. A nighttime time-lapse is going to be shooting images of just a few seconds long, so you need to gather lots of light fast, and you won't be able to use light pollution filters on your lens. Once you have picked your location, just go out there and set up your tripod in an open area. Keeping the tripod low to the ground minimizes the chance the rig will be rattled by wind. The next thing is that while there's still light, you should pre-focus. Stars are far away, so one might think that setting the focus at infinity will do. But, generally that will get you close to focus, but not precisely in focus. You may get a little focus overkill that way, so to be sure you are precisely in focus, while there's still light, point your camera at something far away, as far away as possible. If the daytime moon is up, use that. Or if there's a mountain or a cloud in the distance, try to use that. At the very least, pick a tree or some rock outcrop as far away as possible. Every camera has its own little unique tricks for focusing. With the Fuji X-T3, which has an extremely fast and accurate autofocus, I find that the easiest way to focus is to turn the focus dial on the front of the camera to S for a single focus, point the camera at some target far away, and press and hold the shutter button halfway till the camera focuses, and then turn the dial all the way to the right to manual focus. Then I can take my finger off the shutter button, and as long as I am careful not to turn the focus dial on the lens, the camera will retain that focus. Once your focus is set, set your camera on your tripod, being careful not to touch your focus dial. Some lenses have focus locks, and if they do, use it. Unfortunately, the zoom lens that I use with my Fuji X-T3 does not. However, it's rarely an issue. I'm just careful not to touch the dial. Once the camera is secured on the tripod, point the tripod in whatever direction you want to shoot your time lapse, and then lock the tripod into position. Then, gently slide your deer strap down into the front of the lens. It's a good idea to have the dew strap pre-fitted for the lens before you do this. If it's pre-fitted and all you have to do is slide the dew strap straight down onto the lens, then there's less chance of accidentally turning any dials and changing lens settings. Also, be sure that the power wire that hangs off the dew strap is facing down. Otherwise, during the night, it may drag the dew strap down a little and change some settings on the lens. If dew starts early and is heavy in your area, I suggest get power onto the dew strap long before you need it. I will usually turn the dew strap on at least an hour before dark. This is where it's handy to have an external power source such as a Jackery so you don't have to worry about running out of power if you start your dew strap early. 
because the D-strap will be the primary consumer of power while filming a nighttime time lapse. If you're going to plug your camera into your external power source as well, now is the time. On the X-T3, the USB port, which is both for getting data as well as charging, is on the left. With other cameras, it may be in other places, and on some cameras, it may be underneath the chassis, which might preclude the camera from taking a charge while sitting on a tripod. If so, that's alright, just shoot your time lapse as long as you can. Most modern cameras will give you at least several hundred exposures per charge, and that's enough to get a time lapse of several hours. One last thing, if you're using an external power source, remember to turn it on. There was a night that I forgot to turn it on. The camera had enough charge to shoot images all through the night, but by about 3 a.m. the lens was totally covered with dew. Let's talk about camera settings for the night time lapse. You're going to want to use fixed manual settings, otherwise you will get a strange effect in which the luminosity of the images will change all throughout the time lapse. Sometimes you'll have a brighter sky or a dimmer sky or brighter stars or dimmer stars, just like you see in the sample that I'm showing you. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. Also notice how the stars are just a little out of focus. This is the result of setting the lens at infinity. There's a little overshoot in that focus that should have been backed off on. And that's why it's necessary to preset your focus while it's still light and you can focus on a distant target. Now let's adjust the camera settings in the interval timer. Finding just the right settings is going to vary a little bit, depending on your camera and lenses. But I find with the Fuji X-T3 that I usually use, with the 18 to 135 millimeter lens, that an ISO of 6400 provides good results. I set the zoom to its lowest, 18 millimeters, and manually set the aperture for as wide as possible, which gives me an f-ratio of 4.5. That gathers a lot of light, which is important for a night time lapse, where speed of photon collection is of the essence. Now with night time lapses, you're going to need to set shutter speeds longer than usual. On a Fuji camera, you do that by turning the shutter speed dial just to the right of the viewfinder to the T. And on the X-T3, there is a dial on the top right at the back of the camera that you move back and forth that will allow you to dial to shutter speeds faster than one second. I get good results with shutter speeds anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds, but I find 13 seconds is great. At 13 seconds, even considering the time it takes the camera to write the image to memory, I can comfortably shoot two or three images per minute, which gives a good smooth time lapse of the nighttime sky. And if I speed up the time lapse to at least 24 frames per second, the stars track very smoothly, as shown in the example above. I'm trying to hold my little camera while adjusting that dial on the back of the X-T3, and on the bottom left side of the LCD screen, there is a blue number indicating the exposure length. Presently it's at 3 seconds and I can dial that up to way more, but I'm just going to dial it up to 13 seconds now. Sorry about the focus struggles, Panasonic cameras have great zoom lenses, good for wildlife, but the autofocus is not so great for video. There it is, you can see 13 seconds, lower left. With all the shooting adjustments made, I just have to set up the time lapse now. I can show how this is done on a Fuji X-T3. Unfortunately, the menu layout will be very different between different makes of cameras. But all you need to know is the principle, and then you can find the settings in your own camera's menus. In the Fuji X-T3 menus, I need to find the time-lapse option, and that's found under the camera subheading. So I'll press the menu button, then the left button and navigate up to the camera icon, then press the right button and navigate down to where it says Interval Timer Shooting, then press the right button again. The interval menu is very simple and straightforward. On the left, where it says Interval, you see three rotary dial menus. Use these dials to set how frequently you want the camera to shoot an image. You could, for example, have the camera shoot an image every second, or alternatively, once every 24 hours. On the right, where it says Number of Times, you can choose anywhere from 0 to 999 or Infinity meaning you can tell the camera to shoot from 0 to 999 images, or an infinite number of images, which basically means until its memory or power runs out. Notice, I already have this set to shoot an image every 30 seconds, and since on astrophotography nights I get up at nautical sunrise, I just set the camera to shoot an infinite number of times. I'll stop the camera shooting manually and collect the camera when I go out to close up the observatory and get the SSD with the telescope's images on it around dawn. When I click right again, I'll come to a start timer. If I leave it at zero, the camera will start shooting its interval immediately, or I can set it to start as late as 24 hours later. This is handy if you set up your camera well before sunset, which really you should, especially if you're in a dew-ridden area, to give your dew strap plenty of time to work before dew starts to set. 
And besides, it's always best if you start a night of astrophotography unrushed and have all of your equipment ready to go well before sundown. I usually set up the camera about two hours before sundown, so I'll set the timer for two hours, press OK, and the camera will begin a countdown sequence and appear to go off. It's actually just going to turn off the LCD screen to save power. And that's it. That's all it takes. When dawn comes, I'll collect the camera and find on it hundreds of images that it shot every 30 seconds all through the night. Then I'll move them over to a photography folder on my computer and select all of them and drag them into my favorite video editor, DaVinci Resolve. Almost instantly after I let go of the left mouse button, DaVinci Resolve will convert them into a time-lapse video. I can then adjust the speed of that video in DaVinci Resolve and have the video editor export the time-lapse as a 1080p, 4K, or 8K video of any length and frame rate of my choosing. And by the way, you can get DaVinci Resolve for free. Let me take a moment and show you how quick and easy this is. I've opened up my folders with all the images from the last time lapse I shot, clicked on one of them, selected Ctrl A to select all of them, and dragged them into DaVinci Resolve. And faster than I can describe the process, it turned them into a video of the time lapse. I can slow down the video as much as I want. Let's triple the length of the time lapse. And now we'll play it. I can increase the length of the time lapse as much as I want, making it minutes or hours long if I wanted to do so. It's just that simple with a powerful video editor. And I'll say one more time that you can get DaVinci Resolve for free. I'll provide a link to it below in the description. DaVinci Resolve is made by a company called Blackmagic, which makes professional equipment for videographers and cinematographers. And it is hands down the best video editor I've ever used. I hope you enjoyed learning to make a nighttime lapse. Now, get out there and make one, because as we all know, you can't go wrong getting out there and shooting the sky.